Moving on to anterocanteric hip fractures, this is a 86-year-old man who slips on ice and falls, sustaining the injury uh, that's shown. He has a type 2 diabetes, atrial fibrillation, coronary artery disease, and end-stage renal disease, and on dialysis and chronic obstructive lung disease. All of the followings are associated with increased mortality uh, at one year after injury, except, and if you look at these, we know that uh, with this injury, an intertrochanteric fracture is a relatively high mortality rate. Uh, two or more pre-existing comorbidities, which, which he clearly has, is also associated with a higher mortality rate. Age of 85 years or greater, uh, and operative fixation greater than 48 hours. So the answer uh, is, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, and male gender uh, is associated. So the answer here is operative fixation uh, within 48 hours is not associated with increased mortality. Uh, however, some studies show that delay greater than three days uh, can result in increased mortality. So looking at the subject of intertrochanteric fractures, uh, these are extracapsular fractures. Um, and really kind of fall into a bimodal um, uh, pathophysiology. And the mechanism in the elderly patient is low energy from osteoporotic uh, falls. And in younger patients, they are uh, high energy trauma. <clears throat> Prognosis, uh, non-union and malunion rates are relatively low. Uh, it's, uh, again, that uh, relates to the fact that these are extra capsular injuries and have uh, rich blood supply and muscularity around it, uh, around the fracture. But the mortality uh, associated with this fracture, particularly in the elderly, is uh, quite high and can be anywhere between uh, 20 and 30 percent in the first year following the fracture. That can correspond to uh, the patient's ASA classification with three and four having increased mortality. Consequently, early medical optimization and co-management strategies with the hospitalist uh, and or a geriatrician uh, can improve your outcomes in managing these patients and should be um, requested early. With regard to classification system, it's probably less useful than uh, the femoral neck fractures. Uh, probably best to consider these as either stable or unstable. Stable fractures uh, will resist medial compressive loads once reduced. In an unstable uh, fracture pattern, typically the lesser trochanter is displaced and, uh, and or uh, comminution of the posterior medial cortex. And those uh, require uh, more substantial uh, fixation. So treatment. Methodology uh, can include uh, sliding hip compression screws. Uh, these are stable. Uh, these are for stable intertrochanteric fractures. And the intramedullary or cephalomedullary nail, uh, usually uh, used in unstable uh, fracture patterns or those in which there is a reverse obliquity, uh, the fracture pattern in that uh, circumstance exits uh, the lateral um, proximal diaphysis of the femur. Those are less stable and will continue a lateral sliding pattern with a, um, a sliding compression hip screw and should be managed either with a fixed lateral plate uh, or uh, a cephalomedullary nail. And um, the use of these nails, uh, I think, has, as we all know, has increased rather dramatically over the last uh, decade. Uh, with regard to questions, there. Uh, the outcomes of, of these two uh, for stable fractures are equivalent. And for intertrochanteric fractures, arthroplasty used to be used much more commonly than it is today. Uh, it's, uh, it requires the operative surgeon to use some implants that are not uh, uh, commonly used and also uh, requires uh, uh, tr the attempted fixation of the greater trochanter uh, in, in cases in which it's, uh, it's uh, evulsed or uh, displaced. But it can be used uh, for salvage of failed internal fixation or pre-existing -exist symptoms of rather severe degenerative osteoarthritis. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.